Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Ripperdon. I'm talking to you today from a birthing room at SIH Memorial Hospital of Carbondale. I'm a family practitioner and I work for Shawnee Healthcare at Shawnee Healthcare in Murfreesboro. I'm speaking to you from a birthing room because I'm hoping to talk to you today a little bit about buprenorphine and what we can do to treat opiate use disorder in women who are pregnant. Now, if you haven't seen a couple other videos that I've made where I talk about what happens if somebody joins an opiate use disorder program or what happens with buprenorphine or how buprenorphine works or even how opiate addiction works, let me encourage you to go watch those videos first. But today I'm hoping to focus specifically on a pregnant person who has opiate use disorder, meaning somebody who might be addicted to something like heroin or pain pills and what we can do to help that woman have a safe and healthy pregnancy. You may wonder what makes me qualified to talk about this topic. Well, I've been prescribing buprenorphine, which is also known as Subutex or Suboxone, for about 10 years now and I've treated a number of pregnant women in that time. In fact, I have more experience treating women with opiate use disorder who are pregnant than anybody in at least the southern third of the state of Illinois and maybe a little bit larger area than that. So I've been doing this for a while. Because I do family practice, that means I get to take care of women who are pregnant but also the babies who are born to those women shortly afterwards. So I have experience taking care both of the women who are dealing with opiate use disorder during pregnancy and with their newborns afterwards. If you are currently pregnant and suffering with addiction, I'm sure you're worrying about the things that all moms worried about. Am I going to be healthy? Is my baby going to be healthy? And what can I do to better the chances that I'm gonna have a healthy baby that gets to come home with me without any kind of complications? Let me encourage you, first of all, to seek out any sort of drug treatment program that you can find. Now, if you're struggling with addiction with things like methamphetamine or benzodiazepines, meaning like Xanax, Ativan, Valium, that's a little bit of a separate issue and I can't really go into that right now. But if you're struggling with opiate addiction, meaning things like heroin, pain pills, then I'm going to encourage you to seek out a program that can prescribe Subutex to you or possibly methadone because those are the two treatments that really work and are pretty safe during pregnancy. I'm gonna focus more on the buprenorphine, which again is also known by Subutex or Suboxone just because that's what I do in my practice. If a woman who is struggling with addiction comes to see me and she's pregnant, to be honest, the addiction doesn't change her obstetrics care very much at all. Still has to come to routine visits, usually every month at the start of the pregnancy, maybe more like every two weeks for the last couple months of the pregnancy, and the last month of the pregnancy about every week. Now what I do for women who are struggling with opiate addiction is prescribe them Subutex, just like I would to anybody else who's struggling with addiction. And the Subutex doesn't change the management of the pregnancy in any appreciable way. Let me say that again because a lot of women wonder about that. If a woman is prescribed Subutex during her pregnancy, it doesn't really change her obstetrics care. It doesn't increase her risk of complications. It doesn't do anything that's terribly notable. Now Subutex does have one side effect constipation, and that's a little more common during pregnancy anyway. So of course that can be an issue, but we can deal with that. That's small potatoes in the grand scheme of things. Now I've said a couple of times that we specifically prescribe Subutex to women who are pregnant. Why do I say Subutex? Again, as I covered in another video, there's a difference between Subutex and Suboxone. Suboxone has an ingredient called Naloxone, which is used to block opiate overdoses. Naloxone is not considered to be safe during pregnancy or it's currently qualified as being not safe during pregnancy. Honestly, it probably is perfectly safe, but we just don't have the research to back that up. So just to be absolutely certain, we doctors don't prescribe Suboxone to a woman who is pregnant. We just prescribe the Subutex. Your initial care during your pregnancy is gonna depend on whether or not you were already on Subutex when you first got pregnant. If you were already on Subutex and you get pregnant, you can just continue to take the Subutex exactly like you were taking before. There are no changes needed whatsoever. If, however, you become pregnant while you're still struggling with addiction, my advice is to get into a doctor just as soon as possible. There are safe and effective ways that you can be started on Subutex, and to be honest, the sooner the better. It's much more safe to get in to see a doctor and be transitioned onto Subutex just as soon as possible when you first become pregnant than it is to continue to struggle with the addiction throughout the course of the pregnancy. I have to say specifically that withdrawal during pregnancy can be a really nasty thing. So if you are struggling with addiction and there is any risk of withdrawal, it's really important that you get in to see a doctor just as soon as possible because withdrawal can cause all sorts of medical issues up to and including miscarriage, which is a totally preventable thing as long as we can get you on the Subutex soon enough. Now, I know that it can also be embarrassing to talk about addiction, but it's important. It's really difficult for your physician or your midwife to take really good care of you during your pregnancy 
if that provider is unaware that you are struggling with addiction. So even though it can be embarrassing and uncomfortable and you might want to know what's happening or you're a little afraid to know what's happening, everything works out much better that way. And again, we do have the resources to give you the proper care that you need and a lower risk for both you and for the baby. I don't want to make it sound like taking Subutex during the pregnancy is not a big deal because taking it is important. It lowers your risk of problems. It lowers the baby's risk of problems. When I see women who are on Subutex who are doing well, taking their medication, not struggling with addiction, I don't have a whole lot of worries. And once again, it doesn't change their obstetrical care very much at all. We know that it's safe, we know that it's effective, and we know that it is the best way to stay clean and to have a healthy baby. Many women who are doing well on their Subutex while they're pregnant may want to know about what they can do with their dosage. So there's actually been a pretty good amount of research on what should be done with Subutex dosages during pregnancy. I've had women ask me if they could possibly wean off, which means slowly cutting down the dosage of the medication throughout the course of the pregnancy so that they're no longer taking the Subutex at the end of the pregnancy. In brief, this isn't recommended. It's not recommended because the little bit of research that we do have actually says that that increases the risk of complications. We also try not to change the dosage really in any way during the pregnancy unless it's absolutely necessary because most of the research says that women who take the same dose throughout their pregnancy have better outcomes. Now, there are a couple of headaches with Subutex for women who are pregnant when it comes time to be in labor. As I've described in some other videos, buprenorphine, the drug that makes up Subutex, does block the effects of other opiates. So frequently, if a woman is in labor and struggling with pain, we'll give an IV pain medication to help control the pain. Those medications, by and large, are not gonna work for a woman who is taking Subutex. So pain management during labor does change a little bit. So that's the bad news, is that most IV pain medications are really not gonna work too terribly well for a woman who's in labor and on Subutex. Here's the good news, though. The epidural works perfectly fine. So if you have questions about pain control during labor in particular, please don't be afraid to ask your provider. We can explain what the options are and what the options aren't. What I found in my own practice is that by and large, we just skip any other kind of management outside of using an epidural for women who feel like they need that for pain control. Again, the epidural works perfectly fine, even though the IV pain medications don't. Many women understandably have concerns about what's going to happen with their baby, especially in regards to whether DCFS will be involved after the baby is born. Where I practice in Southern Illinois, yeah, unfortunately, if a woman is on Subutex, that does trigger at least a minor look at your chart from DCFS. What do I mean by that? Anytime a woman has been prescribed Subutex, there's going to be a caseworker and possibly a DCFS worker who reviews that woman's chart to decide whether they feel like everything is okay. Here's the good news. For women who take their Subutex as prescribed during pregnancy and who don't really struggle with the addiction during the pregnancy, in other words, they're making their appointments, their urine drug screens, don't show any sign of illicit drug use, really nothing happens. I don't mean exactly nothing happens, but what I mean is there's a brief chart review either from a caseworker or from a DCFS worker, but once that worker sees that the woman is doing well, there's no further action that's taken. And a lot of times the woman whose chart is being reviewed isn't even aware that that's happening. Now, we don't really have a choice. There are certain laws and protections in place that require that review to happen. But once again, if a woman is doing well, she's unlikely to even know that that went on. Here's what that means. Yes, the baby will go home with that woman without any questions asked. There's no concerns of DCFS taking over care or doing anything that the woman is not going to like in those cases. There are, unfortunately, some cases where women do still struggle with addiction throughout the course of their pregnancy, and in this case, DCFS may be involved. And that can mean anything from DCFS is coming in for home visits to make sure that the baby is safe and that the drug use isn't affecting the woman's ability to take care of the baby, or in the most severe cases, unfortunately, sometimes the baby is taken into protective custody, which means foster care. Now, I can't prevent this in all cases, and to tell the truth, the healthcare provider doesn't have a whole lot of power in these cases. That decision typically comes to DCFS. All you can do to try to prevent that from happening is, again, work on staying clean and free of drug use throughout the pregnancy to the best of your ability. In Southern Illinois, where I practice, what I've seen most commonly is that even if a woman is struggling with addiction in the first parts of her pregnancy, so long as the last several urine drug screens show no sign of illicit drug use, that DCFS is not going to take the child into protective custody. Some women will not seek health care because they are afraid that a drug test may be done and it may show that they are using illicit drugs. 
If this happens in the first or second trimester and a woman is able to sort of keep her addiction under control, in other words, get on Subutex, get off the illicit drugs, then that woman really doesn't have a whole lot of threat of DCFS taking custody of her child. DCFS in practice is much more interested in what goes on during the last month or so of the pregnancy. So again, please don't let the fear of having an illicit drug show up in a drug screen prevent you from seeking the health care that you need if you are struggling with addiction. So once again, being on Subutex during pregnancy really doesn't have a whole lot of detrimental effects to the pregnancy or to the process of labor and delivery. For the woman, once again, really not too big of a deal. For the newborn, sometimes it can cause the need for some increased monitoring in health care though. Let me tell you what I mean by that. There's something called neonatal abstinence syndrome or NAS for short. Neonatal abstinence syndrome is really just fancy medical terminology for opiate withdrawal. So yes, there is some chance of the baby experiencing this after they are born, even if the mom takes the subutex exactly like she should and doesn't abuse any illicit drugs throughout the whole course of the pregnancy. Subutex can cause withdrawal. Now, a woman can do certain things to lower this risk. Smoking increases the risk, changing the dose of subutex or not taking the subutex exactly like she should throughout the course of the pregnancy, and just generally not taking great care of herself during her pregnancy all increase risk of baby experiencing this condition. But once again, I can't promise that even if a woman takes the subutex exactly like she should and does everything right that this won't happen to her baby. The odds of neonatal abstinence syndrome are fairly small. About one in three babies will experience this. And it sounds terrible. We're talking about a baby who's undergoing withdrawal, and I'm sure that paints a very sad picture for anybody who's listening to this, seeing this, or thinking about it at all. In truth, it's a bit of a boring condition, and here's how it works. If a baby is born to a mom who's taking Subutex, we have protocols in place at the hospital in which we watch the baby very closely for about 72 hours after the baby is born to see what's happening. On the subutex, generally withdrawal, if it's going to happen, is going to happen between 48 hours and 72 hours after the baby is born. We have a scoring system, we kind of know how to measure that, how to watch for it, and the nurses have become pretty experienced at seeing this and knowing when a baby is going to withdrawal and when a baby is not. The treatment for withdrawal is not terribly complicated. We actually give the baby small doses of morphine that then de-escalate over the course of a week, meaning we basically wean the baby off of morphine. The nuts and bolts of what that looks like is this. Typically, if we believe that a baby is going into significant withdrawal, it means that unfortunately they do have to be admitted to the NICU, which is right down the hall from the birthing room where I'm standing right now talking to you. So they don't have to go very far. The baby is then monitored by a neonatologist, meaning a specialist in complications of the newborn. And we have protocols in place so that the baby gets a certain dose of morphine at the start of the week, and then it's slowly tapered down over the course of the week. Again, I know this all sounds kind of terrible and harsh. We're talking about a baby withdrawing, we're talking about giving morphine to a newborn, but it looks kind of boring in practice. Babies who are treated for neonatal abstinence syndrome typically look like any other newborn. They might be a little bit fussier than other babies for that first week, but we treat them with the morphine to make sure that they're not having any other severe symptoms such as vomiting, diarrhea, inability to feed, or pain. As I've talked about in some other videos, withdrawal feels absolutely terrible and we want to make sure that the newborn doesn't experience this. I've had many newborns who have been treated for neonatal abstinence syndrome. Most parents feel of course terrible when they have to go through this, but when they get through the experience, generally they describe it as having been kind of boring. Why is it boring? You hope that you'll be able to bring your newborn home just a day or two after they're born if you have a healthy pregnancy and everything goes well. It's a little bit heartbreaking to learn that yes, your baby is withdrawing and is gonna to have to stay in the hospital for another week to be treated. When a lot of people picture a NICU, they're gonna picture a whole lot of very small babies who are hooked up to tubes and wires and monitors and that kind of thing, babies who look kind of sick. If a baby starts to have withdrawal or neonatal abstinence syndrome and has to go to the NICU, these babies are generally not gonna look like that. These babies are generally gonna look pretty healthy. So I kind of want to calm any fears that a baby going to a NICU means that that baby is incredibly sick. Once again, the treatment of neonatal abstinence syndrome is pretty calm. The baby is closely monitored by a neonatologist or a nurse practitioner who specializes in this and given a small dose of morphine to try to calm down the withdrawal. It works well. I've seen a couple of dozen babies who have gone through this before and none of them have had major issues. And again, when most parents get through the experience, they describe it as having been 
kind of dull. There's not really anything exciting that happens. They just have to stay at the hospital for a week while the baby is treated. Here's the really good news. On the back end, there are no long-term effects for babies who have undergone neonatal abstinence syndrome. Meaning, even if your baby should withdraw and have to be treated with morphine for the withdrawal, it doesn't affect their growth and development over the short term or over the rest of their lives, as far as we can tell. There have been several studies done on babies who have been treated, comparing them to babies who haven't been treated, all for moms on Subutex, and it turns out there's no difference. So is it sad to have to stay with your baby in the NICU for a week when you're hoping to go home right after they deliver? Yes, it is. That can be frustrating and it kind of ruins the birthing experience a little bit because it destroys that image that we all have of taking the small baby home, coming home to balloons and flowers and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, this is what's best for the baby to be treated and monitored for it if mom is taking the Subutex throughout the course of the pregnancy. Once again, I don't want the threat of baby going through withdrawal to be a deterrent to anybody. In other words, I, I still encourage all moms who are struggling with opiate use disorder, with opiate addiction, to seek care and to be put on the Subutex if possible. All the research that we have says that that is what leads to the best outcomes both for mom and for baby because we know what's happening, we know what to expect, and that's a big deal. If you're seeing a doctor and being prescribed a medication, we know exactly what's going into your body, we can measure it, we can monitor it, and if the baby is going to have withdrawal, we at least know that we can expect it, monitor it, and treat it appropriately. For any woman who's going to deliver outside of Southern Illinois, you do need to also ask if the hospital has a protocol for monitoring and caring for newborns born to moms who are taking Subutex through the course of their pregnancy. Any hospital with any kind of experience in taking care of women who are on Subutex should have a protocol for monitoring the newborn for signs of withdrawal and for taking care of the newborn if the newborn does start to show signs of withdrawal afterwards. If, quite frankly, you ask a hospital if they have this protocol and they can't tell you that they do, you really need to encourage your healthcare providers to get in contact with a different hospital that does have a protocol or to speak with a provider who's more experienced in taking care of these sorts of problems. Not to toot my own horn so much, but I'm proud to say once again that I've been providing obstetrics care to women on Subutex for longer than anybody in this region and for a long ways around, and also to newborns uh, with that problem. Here in Carbondale, I'm especially proud that we've developed protocols to help take care of newborns to make sure that there aren't any major complications to those born with neonatal abstinence syndrome. Once again, if you are pregnant and struggling with addiction, I do encourage you to speak with your obstetrics provider about what you can do for treatment of that addiction. If you live in the Southern Illinois area, let me encourage you to come and see me at Shawnee Healthcare in Murfreesboro or one of our other providers who provides obstetrics care. We have experience in treating women with opiate use disorder through pregnancy and also in taking care of the newborns to the moms who are born thereafter. I'm also happy to say that SIH Memorial Hospital of Carbondale has very good protocols in place for taking care of moms on Subutex and for newborns born to those moms. Again, I encourage all women who are pregnant struggling with addiction to speak about it with their healthcare provider. If the woman is struggling with opiate addiction in particular, to get on Subutex if at all possible. And again, if Subutex isn't an option, methadone is also a perfectly acceptable and safe option, although finding a provider who will give that is more difficult. I also want to encourage all women out there who are pregnant and dealing with addiction to not be too afraid. Because again, truth be told, if you can get the addiction under control during the pregnancy, by which I mean get on Subutex, avoid illicit drugs as much as possible, you really don't have any major risk from being on the Subutex throughout the course of the pregnancy. There's no reason that you can't have an entirely happy, healthy newborn without any long-term complications whatsoever. Now, are there a few bumps in the road? Of course, getting on Subutex at the start can be a little rough. It can be a little embarrassing to talk about the addiction. Nobody wants to put their baby at risk of withdrawal, but this really is the best way for women who are struggling with addiction, is to get on the Subutex, talk with their healthcare provider, be monitored throughout, and get all the appropriate healthcare. I can't promise that you'll have a well-behaved kid, but I can promise that your healthcare provider will do everything possible to make sure that you have a safe pregnancy, delivery, and that your newborn turns out to be just as rambunctious and rowdy as you hope they will be when they become a toddler.